All right. In this lesson, we are going to be talking all about the different types of sampling designs that you can use. Um, so we're going to focus on what a simple random sample is, sometimes abbreviated uh, SRS, which is what's in the parentheses. Um, but we're also going to talk about some other common sampling designs um, so that you can kind of see the different types of ways that you can draw a sample. Um, but to start off with, we're going we're to start off with the big one, which is the simple random sample or SRS. So a, a simple random sample is a sample in which each set of n elements of the population has an equal chance of selection. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that every individual has an equal chance of being selected, though. Um, think of n as your sample size. So what this means is that in a simple random sample, let's say our sample is going to be size 5, that every group of five individuals has the same likelihood of being chosen. Now again, that doesn't mean that everyone has an equal chance. That just means that every group of five has an equal chance, or every group of ten has an equal, ch equal chance. Uh, so you, you have to be careful with this definition. Um, and, and making sure you understand that it's not about the individuals, it's about each group having an equal chance of being chosen. And then um, a definition that we, we talked about, I know, um, previously, but a sampling frame is the set of individuals from whom the sample is going to be drawn. So when we talk about an SRS, there, there's really two steps that you, that you have to go through. The first is that you have to label every individual. So however you want to do that, but every individual gets a label. Now, usually that's a numerical label um, because you're going to use like a graphing calculator or a set of digits to randomly select um, the number of people that you want, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a number. Step two is that you're going to then randomly select your sample. So random selection. And again, we talked about this um, in the first lesson for this unit, but those can be a, a number of different things. Um, you can use tables of random digits or even a graphing calculator. So lots of different ways that you can actually come up with your sample. All right, now once we take a sample, there is this idea of what's called sampling variance that comes about which is just the natural tendency for your samples to differ a little bit from the population. Now, we don't want them to differ a whole lot from the population, but a little bit of, of difference is, is going to be expected. Um, I know we talked about the census in a previous lesson, and we talked about how um, the, the numbers you get from the census probably are not going to exactly match the numbers that you get if you just did a sample of people in Johnson County. Uh, they're probably going to be similar. I mean, they should be close. Uh, if we're thinking about maybe average income, and the average income for the U.S. is $40,000, whereas the average income for Johnson County is maybe $43,000, we, we're really not going to expect them to be the exact same number, but they should be close. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the other unique types of sampling that we can see. Um, the first that we're going to look at is what's called stratified sampling. So in stratified sampling, the population is divided into subcategories, which are called strata. That's where we get the name stratified. And then a simple random sample is taken from each strata. Those groups should be make, made based on some other common characteristic that they have in common. Uh, so if, as an example, maybe you're trying to find out what students at North think of the food served in the cafeteria. Uh, the cafeteria workers think that students have different opinions on the food based on lo how long they've been at North. In other words, seniors might not like the food as much since it's pretty much the same as it was three years ago. Um, how should we adjust our sampling strategy to allow for this difference? Um, probably shouldn't use a simple random sample. And the reason why, if you think about a simple random sample, there is the possibility that your sample could be a sample of all seniors. Like even if you did it for the entire school, by randomly selecting people, just by randomness, you might end up with a group that's all seniors or you might end up with a group that's all freshmen. And, and so an SRS may be not the way to go. Instead, maybe what we should do is group the students by their grade level. Because again, 
kind of think that how long they've been at North is going to affect the results. So we're going to group students by grade level, and then we're going to randomly select a number of individuals from each grade level. So maybe you're interested in getting like a sample of, let's say, 20 kids that you want to look at. Then what you might want to do if you, again, separate them by grade level is take five students from each grade level. So you take five, randomly select five freshmen, randomly select five sophomores, randomly select five juniors, and randomly select five seniors. Uh, so there's a little bit of a simple random sample in there, but we're also grouping them up. Uh, and that way we make sure that we get a few individuals from each different grade level. Okay, similar to a stratified sample, we're going to talk in just a moment about cluster sampling. Um, before we do that, let's make sure we understand what clusters are and how they're different from strata. So clusters are heterogeneous or representative groups based on location. This word heterogeneous basically means that they're not all going to look the same, that there's not this common characteristic that they share. So in a stratified sample, how we were separating by grade level and how one group was all freshmen, one group was all sophomores. In a heterogeneous sample, that's not going to be the case. We're going to have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, but we're going to do it based on location. So maybe instead of grouping based on grade level, we're going to group based on what floor they're currently in class on. So maybe we're on first floor versus second floor versus field house level. That would be an example of clusters because, again, they're based on location and they're mixed around. Um, so heterogeneous, you can kind of think of as being mixed samples, whereas strata are uh, more unified. We would call them homogeneous types of groups. So a cluster sampling is where we're going to first separate the population into clusters and then randomly select a number of clusters and sample all individuals in those clusters. To give an example of what that might look like, um, I live in an apartment complex. And so if I wanted to do a cluster sample to figure out how many Chiefs fans lived in my apartment complex, I might choose to randomly select four out of the 24 buildings and then go and knock on every single door in those four buildings to see if they were Chiefs fans or not. So what's different is we're not going to just sample from those four clusters. We're actually going to try to get everyone from those four clusters because, again, they're different. They're mixed groups, and we want for that mixture, that kind of heterogeneous aspect to come out when we're sampling them. So to give you another example of this, it's been difficult finding the students uh, me selected in the previous example because of the large number of students in each grade level. Again, there's a lot of students. There's you know anywhere from three to 500 in each class. However, all the seminars at North are separated based on grade level. How could we possibly use this knowledge to draw a cluster sample? And then what are some drawbacks to this? So how could we use this to draw a cluster sample? Well, what we would want to do is we would want to, well, and, and you know, more that I think about this, that probably wouldn't work. Um, because if you're thinking about a cluster sample, they'd have to be heterogeneous, and seminars are not mixed. You would want it to be a mixed seminar. Um, so it would probably be better to just do it based on a random class. Um, so let's, let's ditch the seminar idea, and let's go ahead and just do it based on the class that they're in. So how can we use that to draw a cluster sample? Well, we would want to randomly select maybe four classrooms. Again, we'll, we'll kind of imagine that we're actually back in school. And then from those four classrooms, we're going to survey everyone in those four classrooms. Now, some drawbacks to this is you're obviously doing everyone. And, and so if your group ends up not being the best mix, 
then it might not end up being a good sample. Like let's say when we do this and we randomly select our four classrooms that we randomly select, you know, a honors or a world regional studies and we select an English nine, we select, you know, a biology classroom and we randomly select like a algebra one classroom. Well, that's going to be a problem because those are all freshman classes. And so you still have that kind of non-mixed group that you're looking at. There are two more types of samples, and there's a lot more than just what I'm sharing with you guys, but these are the most prevalent. Um, Multi-stage samples are sampling schemes that combine several different sampling methods. Um, so you might be doing an SRS, but also doing a cluster. You might be doing a cluster, but also a stratified sample put together. Um, or you might be doing a systematic sample that we're, we're going to talk about in just a moment, but doing it with clusters. And so there are a possibility to kind of combine these into some, some different uh, multi-stage samples. The last one I want to talk to you guys about is a systematic sample. So this is a sample that's drawn by selecting individuals systematically from a sampling frame. So as an example of this, maybe the administration at North wanted to get some information on how students arrived to school. And so what they did was they stood out by the field house doors and they sampled every 10th person to come in the doors and asked them uh, whether or not, or how they got to school that day. Um, and so that's kind of the idea is a systematic sample you're doing every, I'll say nth, because it doesn't matter what n is, you could do every you know fourth person, every fifth person, every 12th person um, individual, but every nth individual is selected. So here's what I would encourage you to do, is try to come up with some different scenarios where some of the sampling techniques might be useful or others might not be useful, um, and think about what are the advantages and disadvantages for those methods. That'll definitely be something that comes up in the homework as you're working through the practice and trying to figure out what sample it was and thinking about, you know, is that the best way to sample? Try to come up with those on your own, and if you have any questions, be sure and let me know. Other than that, have a great rest of your day.